Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another. Oh, wow! A moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. And I found him in my room going through my stuff. Yeah, I know. I hate it when my brother does that. If only we knew when they'd go into our room. Sounds like you guys need a burglar alarm. How did he do that? He does it all the time. Just go with it. Isn't a burglar alarm kind of expensive and complicated? Actually, you can make a pretty simple one for under $5. But first, we need to talk about electric circuits and switches. So an electric circuit is just a path through which electricity can flow. There are three main parts to any basic electric circuit. First is a power source, like a battery. This provides the electricity for the circuit. Second is a load. This is what uses the electricity, like a light bulb. The third is the path through which the electricity can flow, like wires. Now, if you want to control an electric circuit, there is a fourth part you need to add. A switch. Now, when most people think of switches, they think of this, a light switch. But there are lots of different types of switches. The thing they all have in common is they can decide when the electricity is on or off. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. To make the burglar alarm, you'll need a six volt buzzer available at a local electronics hobby shop, along with a battery pack for two AAA batteries, two AAA batteries, a clothespin, aluminum foil, duct tape, electrical tape, a paper clip, a roughly four inch by four inch piece of cardboard, a smaller piece of cardboard, and some string. To start, twist together the black wire from the battery pack and from the buzzer. Use some electrical tape to hold them together. Second, tape the red wires to two separate small pieces of aluminum foil. Third, wrap one of the pieces of aluminum foil around the top of the closing end of the clothespin. Make sure it doesn't touch any part of the metal spring. Wrap the other piece of aluminum foil around the bottom of the clothespin, again making sure it doesn't touch the metal spring. Test your circuit by inserting the batteries. You should hear buzzing when the clothespin is closed and no buzzing when the clothespin is open. If you hear buzzing when it's open, make sure the aluminum foil isn't touching the metal spring or each other. If you don't hear buzzing when it's closed, check to make sure your wires are still attached to the foil. The clothespin is your switch. To control it, take the small piece of cardboard, punch a hole in it, and tie it on a string. Now insert the cardboard into the clothespin. This will break the circuit and keep the buzzer from sounding until you pull it free. Use duct tape to tape the battery pack and the clothespin to the larger piece of cardboard. Unbend the paper clip and re-bend it into a U-shape. Put the buzzer onto the cardboard, push the two ends of the paper clip through the holes on the buzzer and the cardboard. Bend them to hold the buzzer in place. You can also tape them in place if you want. So our electric circuit has a power source in the form of two AAA batteries, a load in the form of a buzzer, our path is the wires, and in this case, our switch is the clothespin. When the piece of cardboard is in place, the electricity can't flow through, so it's in the off or open position. But when we pull the cardboard free, the circuit closes. Or in other words, electricity can flow through, so it's in the on position. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>